So before we move into the heavy theory that's involved in this section, we're going to get some practice with expressing equations uh, in terms of the quadratic form. And um, I'll share with you one of my tricks that I stumbled upon a couple years ago. Uh, I, I kind of stealing it from biology, uh, known as a Punnett square. I uh, really like that, by the way, because it has the word pun in it. But <laughs> anyhow, uh, we're going to rewrite uh, each of these equations using that x transpose ax format. All right. So when it says express the quadratic form in matrix notation, what they're looking for is x transpose ax, where a is a symmetric matrix. And my Punnett square trick will help you to uh, populate the entries of the matrix. So with example part A, we got 2x squared minus 5y squared plus 6xy. So note that there are only two variables involved in this equation. So to start things out, we're going to write out a row vector having those two variables, x and y. So we're defining that as a 1 by 2 row vector. Now we'll get to the matrix in the middle in just a second, but do keep in mind that the first matrix we have here with x, y, that's the transpose of the column matrix of unknowns. So directly to the right of this, we'll use x and y again, but in column matrix format instead of uh, row matrix format. Now as for the entries that go inside of your symmetric matrix, uh, here's my little trick. I'm going to make a 2 by 2 Punnett square. And um, I'll head each of the rows with the two variables, x and y. And I'll also label columns using those two variables, x and y. Now, these four boxes are going to be correlated to the four entries of our symmetric matrix A. Now, if we uh, maybe multiply, you know, think of this as like a multiplication table as well, um, the first box is going to involve x squared. So what that means is that the first entry in the first row should uh, involve the coefficient of x squared. Um, so the coefficient of x squared in our equation is 2. Now, if we multiply the uh, variable y to the variable y, so I'm looking at the bottom right box, we get y squared, which tells us that the uh, second entry along the main diagonal, if you want to refer to it that way, is going to involve the coefficient of y squared, which is negative 5. So from this, I can actually generalize to um, a little rule for us. The entries that go along the main diagonal are always going to be the coefficients of the variable squared. Now, going back to this little Punnett square multiplication table, there are actually two spots that involve x, y. So the um, upper right-hand corner and the lower left-hand corner both involve product x, y. So this tells us that the uh, coefficient of the xy term should be split into two. And if you look back on the first page, the entries off the main diagonal were written as b over 2. And it's because of this reason. We actually need to distribute the coefficient across two entries. So the coefficient of xy is a 6, which means that what number is going to go in the uh, last two remaining entries? 3, yep. And there we have it. That is our uh, quadratic form using matrix notation. Let's try another one. All right, so here we have one additional variable here. We've got z involved now. So for our row vector, we want it to be a 1 by 3 since there's a variable x involved, a variable y, and a variable z. 
what that means in terms of the symmetric matrix A is that it should be a 3 by 3. And the reason for that is so that the multiplication all works out. Now the column vector going to the right of it will include the same unknowns x, y, and z. Now using the rule from part A, the coefficients of the square terms are going to line up along your main diagonal. So we'll put 3 first, and then 5, and then 1. As for the entries off the main diagonal, we can do a little Punnett square trick again. This time it's going to have nine boxes. We'll head each row with the variables x, y, and z, as well as the columns. So with the boxes on the diagonal, of this Punnett square, we have x squared, y squared, and z squared, okay, which confirms that we should be using the coefficients of those as our main diagonal entries. Now let's continue with uh, row 1 in this Punnett square. Uh, to the right of x squared is going to be x, y. All right. Now, uh, there's also another xy box in here, and that would be the uh, first box of row 2. So again, we, we have to play that you know, distribution game where um, you know, we take the coefficient of xy, and we have to split it across two entries. So going to the right of 3 in row 1 of our symmetric matrix should be a 2, and then directly underneath the 3 should be a 2 as well. Going further with row 1 in the Punnett square, we're now looking at the coefficient of xz, which that's going to get split across two entries as well because there's another xz box in this Punnett square. That would be the first box of row 3. So we'll take the coefficient of negative 6 and split it across two entries. This will be a negative 3 to finish off row 1 and a negative 3 to finish off column 1. So what, what number should fill in the last two entries of the symmetric matrix? Six. Yep, you got it. All right, and that would result from noticing that the last two boxes of our Punnett square involve the product YZ. And I just want to show you that this is a symmetric matrix. OK, all the entries that are across from each other based on the main diagonal, are equal. There we have it. Guys, got any questions, comments, concerns, winning lotto numbers, anything like that? No. All righty. So, Uh, this is going to lay the foundation for our work with conic sections that we will um, really hit hard on tomorrow. Um, w one issue that uh, arises with uh, conic sections, uh, particularly their equation, um, are these things called cross terms. Now a cross term, generically speaking, uh, looks like this where there's a real number being multiplied to a product of two different variables. So for example, if we go back up to our um, equations from uh, you know, our, our last example, uh, each of these equations has uh, at least one cross term. Um, the equation given in part A, this term 6xy is considered a cross term. It has that format a sub k, x sub i times x sub j. Uh, in other words, you know, it's a product of a number and two different variables. And um, the equation given in part b has three cross terms. There's 4xy, negative 6xz, and 12yz. Now, um, the reason why they pose this, you know, so-called issue um, 
is uh, really with regard to their graphs. Uh, anytime that you have cross terms involved in your quadratic form, um, which is going to relate to you know a, a conic section, um, it, it rotates it out of what's called standard position. Now that now that's something that we're going to look at a little closer in the next section. But I just want to explain to you why you know I'm claiming that there's an issue when we have cross terms. Um, in the context of calculus, cross terms uh, could, could also make you know things like integration a little more difficult uh, versus when there are no cross terms. So I do want to let you know that uh, there is a way of rewriting these quadratic forms so that the cross terms go away, and it's it's very closely linked to um, the eigenvalues of that symmetric matrix. Um, in particular, we can do something that's called a change of variable, or more specifically, orthogonal change in variable uh, in the quadratic form by making a particular substitution. Um, and, and that substitution is this, all right? Um, if you have cross terms involved in your quadratic form, then you can replace the um, variable matrix X with a product of two different matrices, uh, namely P times Y. Now, this P is pretty special for us. Um, P is an orthogonal matrix. And uh, this is something that we can always do with quadratic forms because the matrix A is always going to be symmetric. And we learn um, before the break that symmetric matrices uh, do uh, give way to diagonalization. Uh, we would always be able to orthogonally diagonalize a symmetric matrix. And so what ends up happening is uh, the following. If we replace <clears throat> um, x, uh, the vector x that is, with the product of p and y, where y is just a column matrix of you know unknowns using y subscripts versus x subscripts, um, then we get something special happening. All right, so let's consider this uh, expression, x transpose ax as Q sub A of the column matrix of unknowns X. Now, if we replace X with PY, then the equation takes on the following form. PY transpose times A times PY. And a little fact from chapter one uh, helps us to simplify this a little bit. Anytime we transpose a product of two matrices, you um, reverse the order of the matrices and you transpose each of them. So we can rewrite that as matrix Y transpose times P transpose times A times PY. Now, I left off the parentheses for a specific reason. Somewhere in the mix here, we're actually going to get a diagonal matrix. And uh, the diagonal matrix results from this inside product, P transpose AP, which we're allowed to multiply those together because matrix multiplication is associative. Now, from before the break, if P orthogonally diagonalizes the matrix A, then P transpose AP is going to be a diagonal matrix. So this ends up turning into Y transpose D Y, where D is a diagonal matrix. In which case, what happens is we go from Q sub A of X to Q sub D of Y. <clears throat> so 
So that's what happens if we make this so-called change of variables. Um, and, and the benefit of doing this is to eliminate cross terms that are involved in your quadratic form. It's a really neat thing to see. And <clears throat> um, it actually is the result of something called the principal axis theorem. And I, I don't know what, what happens. Each time I print these notes, I, I always see like a picture frame, but there's like nobody inside the picture. I don't know. Are, are you guys seeing anybody inside the picture frame here? I know it's weird, huh? I can't see. I, I think there's supposed to be like a wrestler in there. Is that is, is there supposed to be John Cena in this picture? <laughs> I can't see anything in there. <laughs> you can see John Cena. I thought Chuck Norris could only see John Cena. Uh, but anyway, a couple of years ago, I I had this like little John Cena action figure that I would just randomly bring in to uh, my linear algebra class at the time and I would just set it on the podium and leave it there <laughs> uh, you know for, for the rest of the semester and people would always ask like whose is that whose is that and I'd say I, I don't know what you're talking about um, so, I, so I'll sometimes refer to this as the John Cena theorem uh, the principal axis theorem I know it's totally unrelated but <laughs> that's just kind of my style I guess um, so the principal axis theorem, a.k.a. the John Cena picture, uh, the John Cena theorem, uh, says this. If A is a symmetric square matrix, then there is, so this guarantees that there is going to be this change of variable that allows us to rewrite the quadratic form involving a diagonal matrix instead. So it says here, specifically, if P orthogonally diagonalizes A, then making the change of variable x equals py in the quadratic form yields the following. All right, so we just saw a minute ago that when we replace x with py, x transpose ax turns into y transpose dy. This tells us something a little bit more. Um, this, is, this claims, uh, and this is something that we can always bank on since it's a theorem, that y transpose dy ends up giving you an equation in this format. So notice that there are no more x subscripts here. And that's because we replaced uh, the, the matrix x with the matrix y. And um, look at the coefficients in front of uh, each of these square terms. We have lambda sub 1, we have lambda sub 2, all the way down to lambda sub n. And look what's missing from this expression. Uh, what's missing here are any cross terms. Okay, we're not seeing any mixture of y1, y2, or y3, y4. Um, by making this special change of variables, we eliminate cross terms. And the coefficients of your square terms, which involve y's now instead of x's, are the eigenvalues. So it's a pretty, pretty cool. Um, it's a pretty cool result, and 